Oh, it was so close to being done too. I just had one, like, I was just fixing up the top, putting some steel plates down instead of bars to make it look a bit nicer. And it's all gone. It's all gone. G'day, guys. My name's Josh. You can call me Ja Woodle. And welcome back to Seven Days to Die Alpha 17 once again, where I am back in the rather overgrown but never forgotten Ja Woodle Park, where Alpha 17 started, where all the base building and testing has been done. And I am back in Ja Woodle Park, even with all the floating trees here, where the magical floating trees, because there is another base design I want to test out. There's one more that I thought might be a good one to have in some of my other series that I'm doing, but before I build it in something where it actually matters and where resources are limited, I wanted to build it in Shawoodle Park and just test it out beforehand. But then coming back here, just before I started filming and like wandering around and looking at all the stuff that I've built, I miss this raceway, man. It took me a long time to build it and I love it and I miss just kind of cruising around and doing hot laps in my Jeep. So before I actually build my new base, I might just jump in the old Jeep here and go for a spin around the track. I don't have the speed mod on here that I, I used to have so the jeep isn't anywhere near as fast or uncontrollable as it once was but it still feels nice just to be back in this again taking the chicane hitting them apexes hitting the curb riding down the back straight i even put in like the little uh the little braking measurement signs like i have the formula one so you can hit your braking points distance to the apex and the little red bar that shows where the apex is i put all them in because it just looks cool Oh man, I just, I miss driving this track. This is a fun track to make. It's definitely easier to drive this track now with the car being so much slower and so much easier to handle. I mean, it's, it's not quite as fun and I mean, well, that's interesting. That's not quite what I was expecting to happen out of <laughs> Well then. Uh, on, yep, there we go. Just put the throttle down and your car starts break dancing. My stuck, what is going on here? Ow! Ah, I've been run over by my own racing truck. Ah, I'm strapped underneath it. Get off me, you sausage. Right, well, that was interesting. Let's uh, just pretend that never happened and continue on the racing line. Uh, uh, um. But yeah, what I was saying before I apparently ran over myself was that it's much easier to drive this track now that the car is much more handleable. Handleable? Is that a word? I'm not sure. Around the last corner, clip the apex and across the line. Oh, man, I miss it. I miss it so much. Even to have it like a little checkered line at the end here. Oh, what a good time that was. Anyway, now that I've done my hot lap, I need to find somewhere new to build a new base. And I reckon probably just somewhere over here. I built the last one over on that uh, second to last corner. So maybe just here in this little like empty spot? I'm not sure. There's got to be somewhere good. I need a good position for this. That should be just enough space there. I'm going to build it just next to the other killing corridors I built in the last time I was in the Woodle episode when I was doing the tutorial on how to build the killing corridor, which is a good thing because what I'm going to build today is going to be a, a kind of a, a modification to the killing corridor. I love the killing corridor. It serves its purpose absolutely well, incredibly well even, and I've never had any issues with it whatsoever. But the only issue I can kind of for C, especially important in some of the other series, is that it is a ranged only base runner. It's a ranged only XP grinder. You have to sit all the way back here and just like pep whoever runs into this killing corridor with arrows or bullets or molotovs or rockets or whatever. Probably not rockets, actually. That seems like a relatively bad idea. But you have to have uh, some way of doing damage from distance, which sometimes isn't your best option you may not have that much like spare ammo or arrows or anything like that you may not have the resources needed to actually fend off a horde from a distance so you might need to get up close and personal so today i am going to see if i can make a melee version of the killing corridor which will be fun it's been a little while since i came into the woodle park and started building stuff to kind of test how things would work normally i come in with a design in mind and uh you know i already kind of know how it's going to work or where it's going to work or fail or whatever but this time, I built that way too low, haven't I? This time, I'm starting from scratch, and we're just going to wing it and see if I can make something that works. It's just going to be your basic default kind of template uh, for the Killing Corridor, which is 13 long for this platform here and 6 high for those of you playing at home. I often get asked what the dimensions of the Killing Corridor actually are, and it is 13 along that top. Well, the way I build it, you can build it however you want. It doesn't really matter too much, but I like uh, the kind of 13 long because it gives me enough uh, time to kill whatever zombies get into there. But it's also 
also not so long that some of the zombies might think that they have a better option trying to break down my support. So that's usually how I build it. So 13 long, 6 high, and with stairs instead of ramps. We have established that stairs give you a much better chance of the zombies not stopping and breaking their access point. Like with ramps, even though that would seem like the easier one to get up onto, uh, zombies often stop and beat on things on their way through. So uh, we'll put those like that. We'll put some stairs down the bottom like this, like that, and like that. And that's kind of at the bare minimum that is just what the killing corridor is it's just a platform that zombies will try and run through to get to you but the important thing with this one is going to be i mean i'm going to put the the one eighth blocks drop at the end here but i'm not going to be on the other end of it with this one over here i stand in this cage or on this platform on the other side and shoot down the corridor but i've got to try and make something that's going to be a little bit easier to use and more efficient to use which means i'm not going to be down here anymore i'm going to be somewhere else i have to build something that's going to give me the best opportunity to kill as many zombies as possible oh 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 no all right Good, Josh. Jeez, how many times have you built this thing? You can't even make it right? For God's sake. God damn it. Now I have to start again. All right, let's try that. Is that is that more stable? Yes, it is. Last time I walked across there, it all fell apart. And that was really, really bad. And I did not enjoy that. But I fixed it. We're okay. We're back to normal. So that is uh, a good starting position. And normally here, I would build like a wall, just like over there. A wall going all the way up the side here to put the barbed wire and stuff on. Which... I mean, while that still will probably work reasonably well for me, that's not kind of the design I'm going to go with this time. I'm going to get rid of these ones, and I'm actually going to get my normal blocks and extend these out like this. I mean, I've got plenty of strength with the uh, the, uh, uh, the supports in the right place. I forgot how to talk for a second there. So uh, weight bearing shouldn't be too much of an issue, I hope. It's going to get really embarrassing really quick. But uh, yeah, so I built this all the way out here so that I think if I have something like... Oh, actually, no, wait. I'm thinking back to the days when I built the, the stapler base, the original melee base. If you put things that aren't solid blocks as a wall, the zombies think they can get through it. Or maybe they've patched it. I built them like 17.2. Maybe in 17.4, they're a little better at registering like what is an obstruction and what's not. So, well, you know what? That's what we're here for. Let's just test it. Let's put some of these in first, just because I kind of like the aesthetics of it, and see how the zombies react to it. If they react good or bad to it, then I'll know whether or not this is going to be a viable option. So here's what I'm thinking. I've got poles on either side, which is just regular poles. This one's obviously touching up to that bottom block, and in this one, the exact same floating above it. So that should hopefully keep the zombies in the corridor. I don't know until I give it a crack. But then I can be on the outside out here with, let's say, we'll just go level one sledgehammer for now. Why not? Just a little sledgehammer cruising around, just like hopefully hitting zombies. So I don't hit the poles as they're going through, which is very, very good. Uh, let's see if I can just go like this and put, let's go uh, zombie. And you know what? Normally, I would go Arlene. Arlene's been with me through so much, but she's gone now. She's moved on. She's gone and run off with a, a, a group of cowboys, if not just one, but a full orgy of cowboys. Let's give ourselves Chelsea. Chelsea, the cheerleader, is going to be our new guinea pig. So she's running through, cruising along, happy as Larry, got her tippies flapping in the wind, and I come in and just go and nail her right in the back of the head. So, that's a good start. Can I can I hit down? I can I can hit down. I think I think we're going to be reasonably okay here. I think this might actually work really well. Yes, nice Gary. All right. Well, let's put some barbed wire in and run a couple of tests and see if this just as like the skeleton of the base will work as well as I hope it will. I spawned in a bunch of Chelsea's down there ready and waiting to test out the new killing corridor. But before I do that, I've given myself a couple of mods to make my sledgehammer a little bit better. And of course, it has to be purple. Nothing's, nothing's worth doing unless it's got the Jabudu purple dye in it. Look at it. Look at that gorgeousness. Oh, it's so sexy. All right. Chelsea, if you please, would you come up here and test out this new nonsense for me? Can I, can I get your attention, please? Can I shoot up in the air? Will that give me... You're going to come up? Or well, she came straight in, that's fine. The rest of them don't really give a shit. You are taking swings at things though, which makes it a little bit worried, but I can still hit you and stand up on like the edge here to get a better angle. That is a good time. Yeah, this is working nicely. So the bars, not the bars, the poles on either side, like with that nice little gap in between. <laughs> not just straight over the edge. Uh, uh, I, I didn't put it like that. She went there by her own volition. I had nothing to do with that. There is no ulterior motives for me bending her over the bars. But yeah, those are that worked. That gap there works absolutely perfectly. Nice, Gary. 
I'm just gonna get rid of that evidence so no one ever sees that again. <laughs> it wasn't me. I promise it wasn't me. Uh, one last Chelsea. Clear all the bodies as well. Hey, darling. How you doing? All right. So they are taking some swings on the way through, which makes me a little bit nervous. So I might even get my uh, my poles back and just... Oh, no. If I could get in there, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. And I might even put, just like in the normal killing corridor, like along the kind of side here. Uh, so which one am I going to need? This one. So we'll copy that rotation just like this, just to protect the barbed wire. So also hopefully keep them from thinking that that's a viable route. And so now there's what? Three blocks I need to break through, which is too much for them, I would think. So it should take them, uh, well, it should stop them from actually taking swings on the way through. But I don't know. I'll put this in. We'll give it another test fight, maybe with some other zombies in there as well, like some, uh, some big fatties, some Hawaiians, some dogs, some spiders, all that kind of stuff, just to see what the best uh, kind of combination against a combination of zombies is going to be. Got a nice little pack of zombies, some zombie dogs, some fatties, some normals, some Chelsea's, all down there ready to take on the new and improved challenge. I put a bunch of extra additions in here, like the metal grate on the top to hopefully stop them jumping but i'm a little bit nervous that only being too high that might not actually work how i'm planning it it is like the the bars are actually in the third block up so i'm hoping they will still see that as a path they can take but i might have to change that around but we'll see how we go and then down at the actual drop part there is some barbed wire on the walls but i didn't want them to think that if i got down to the end they could like jump across so i've made some solid walls for them to try and get around in fact i might even just go like this and just put some extra walls up the top because you never know they might be able to jump over two block highs sometimes they do sometimes they jump on each other's heads it's usually just a bad time if they get up on top so that hopefully will work nicely so they don't run around and punch me in the back of the head so i'm gonna stick here fire the gun a couple times to get their attention get the purple sledge out and here we go come on everybody everyone turn around no nope, this way this way over here look i'm over here there we go okay so they come in they're still taking swings but they're nice and slow i could you know just like walk through and hit a couple i can stand up a little bit and i can hit the dogs and whatever i need to do oh Oh, there's a bit of a pile up at the end here. Big Tubby over here is blocking everyone from getting through. Ow! They can reach through. Ow! They can definitely reach through. Okay, that's a problem. I need to make like this uh, this little barrier here a little bit wider because that seems to be going relatively badly. So it really is like if I if they run past me, then some of them decide that they can get through to me. Like this guy. What are you doing? Oh, no, nope, you're going that way. No, nope, you turn around. I'm confused. I'm confused. What is your pathfinding telling you to do? Where are you going, Jigglypuff? I'm not entirely sure what happened to this guy, but he, uh, <laughs> he somehow got hanged inside the killing corridor. I didn't do that, I swear. So every now and again, a couple of them just turn around, which it wouldn't be so bad if I wasn't actually worried about them, like, oh, shit, I hit the bars, coming around the other way and doing some damage. Stop it. Stop it. They're hitting, they're hitting the poles. Get out of there. Stop breaking all my shit. The good news is, though, that even, like, right down the very end here, the drop is still doing exactly what we need it to do. So even if I stand here when I do have the ammo and just, like, pepper them down, I kind of want to wanna move those bars. I reckon those bars have something to do with it. Who's still, like, fucking grumbling down here? Who's making all that racket? You. Would you hurry up and get up here so I can kill you with everyone else? Before I start tearing stuff down, there is a loot bag in there, and the good news is that you can definitely reach through and loot it. I mean, I probably should have assumed that you can, given that they can reach through and punch me in the dick, so I'm sure I can probably reach through there and grab whatever loot they drop. A little bit of damage has been done, but I reckon it's because of these bars up the top here. I reckon it's not quite as tall as it might need to be. So I'm just going to go like this and go all the way down to here, like that, and go there. Clear selection. Dig it res rid of some of the poles, but that's okay because I think I'm going to do something different with them anyway. Having two poles there seems like a great idea. I might even just replace these ones and put in some more stainless steel ramps because that might give me a slightly better result. I'm not sure. I won't know until I try it. Get rid of you. Go to there and just put the ramps uh, like this. Go advanced rotation all the way around. Boom. Like that. So like a nice little like aesthetically pleasing little gap. But it means that hopefully I can put the bars a little bit higher up and make it just a little bit more secure.
This looks much, much better. It's now three high, which is very, very good. Although they can like kind of jump up here and get along with the top. They will get hit by some of the barbed wire, but there is a way to get for them to get through there, but they won't ever make it through the drop at the end here. It just looks a bit better too. It looks a little bit more mean, a little bit more my style. It's still symmetrical. It's still got its symmetricality, which is all important. Got a bunch of zombies down there ready to go. Right, let's get the old purple out again and get the zombies to come up here. Excuse me, love. Can you come up the top, please? There we go to get, get your attention. Yes, I did. All right, dogs go in. Easy does it. Ow, damn it. I need to stop standing on the edge there. I built myself some extra standing room specifically so I wouldn't have to deal with that. That's quite, that's quite a few. That's quite, <laughs> that's quite a few zombies. You can just kind of sit here. There will be some, uh, some upkeep that needs to be done over the time because occasionally some of them get stuck and turn around and go back the other way. But for the most part, as <laughs> Chelsea's once again just lying on her back and <laughs> somehow slotted into the envelope. Not sure how she managed to do that. But for the most part, they carry on down the path. So as far as they're concerned, there is nothing between them and getting around the other side, going around the outside, around the outside to get to me, which is good. It's exactly what I needed. Chelsea's is stuck there. Old mate here is getting a little bit annoyed with his sweet comb over. So you really could, if I could actually hit the shot, it'd be lovely. You get a little bit closer for those ones. But you really could just kind of stand here and fend off a horde with nothing but a sledgy. That'd be wonderful. Almost done. One last Jeffrey left. Come on. Come on, you big marshmallow. Get over here. Can I reach you down there? Oh, right in the butt. Right in the butt. Put my sledgehammer right between your butt cheeks and swung it as hard as I could. Still didn't die, though. There we go. You're dead now. Yes, you are. Good, good, good. So you really can, if you need to get the dogs or whatever, you can stand up on this little ramp here, which is lovely, and reach down. But if you do stand up there, then someone's going to get pretty pissed off at you. Chelsea, you, you, you're right down there. It's causing issues. That is a... Uh, that's a fair chunk of bodies. It's out. Uh, no loot, though. But the good news is that this base worked perfectly. I was expecting to have to go through a couple of iterations. In fact, I already did. But even some more uh, different designs before I got it working exactly how I wanted. Well, this has worked a treat. The only thing I'm worried about is cops. So like during a horde, a copper shop, and you've got really no protection on the outside here, but a couple of extra blocks here and there, just to make yourself some protection on the outside from any cop vomit. It's going to be harder, going to be more building involved than just making yourself a cage like that one. But you'll be nice and safe for the, uh, well, from pretty much anything. Also vultures. Definitely need some extra railings along the top for some vultures. But that's worked out a treat. No! 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 Oh, I did it again! Oh, that's so frustrating! It's all gone! It's all completely gone! <laughs> Fuck! God damn it! I was just making some aesthetic touches the last couple of spots. Oh, I hate everything! I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Normally when I'm building these kind of things, I'll save it at any kind of major point, but I haven't saved this one in, at all. I have no backup to go to. I have to rebuild all of that. Oh, it was so close to being done too. I just had one, like, I was just fixing up the top, putting some steel plate stand instead of bars to make it look a bit nicer, and it's all gone. It's all gone. All of it. It's all gone. Ah, oh, for Fuck's sake! God damn it! You know what? That's just going to take me way, way too long to rebuild just to do the outro. But there you go. You can go back and see what it looked like if we just get back in the video like a minute. You can see it all. It's all its glory. How you build the outside of that is completely up to you. You can see as it was collapsing there, I had some, uh, some, some plates and some bars so I could still see the outside. So if any cops or whatever did show up, I could see them and shoot them if I really wanted to. But uh, visibility for me is key so I can look around and see what is around. But you can build whatever you like. You can just build it straight out of iron bars or wood planks or whatever you want to build. It doesn't really matter. As long as the vultures can't get through the top, that's one main thing, and the cops can't see you because they won't vomit at you unless they can actually see you. So protect yourself on all sides. But if you build a hopefully more secure version of that melee only killing corridor, I think you'll be pretty happy. Just build some extra supports and don't build everything out of heavy as fuck stainless steel and I'm sure you will be a okay. But I am going to, you'll see these bases again, because I'm going to rebuild them in other series. I will build them again, that's for sure. Just this one, 
I just look. It's gonna take me like half an hour to rebuild that thing, and uh, I just, I just, I just can't be bothered. My, I'm, my, I'm too crushed. My soul has been kicked in the balls, and I just don't have the the uh, <laughs> desire to redo that one again right now. But I'll have to come back and build some more cool shit in Jawoodle Park in another episode because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching. Most of all, thank you to the patrons on Patreon who made this episode possible. If you like to make sure to like button down below or subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter. If I don't talk to you there first, I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.